G'day fellas, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, please hit the like button and subscribe if you enjoy this content. Well, the Canadian government is not happy with Sean Strickland or Dana White, and they want them both to be held responsible for the disgusting words that were spoken at the Media Day interview a couple of days ago. And so to give you a little backstory, this guy, Alexander Lee, who I believe works for MMA Fighting, the same company as Ariel Hawani, surprise, surprise, uh, basically started asking Sean Strickland about previous tweets he had made about the you-know-who community. And Sean Strickland went on a rant and basically called him out and said, you're the problem, man. Like, you're the one bringing this stuff up. We're here for a fight and you're asking me questions like this when there's bigger things going on. That's basically the gist of what Sean Strickland said. I already made a video about it if you want to go back and watch it. But the backlash that has come his way from the Canadian mainstream media, and we'll find out later in this video that it's actually from the government, uh, has actually been pretty hilarious to watch, in my opinion. Now I'm going to stick my hand up and fully admit that I was wondering why Sean Strickland was fighting in Canada. It didn't make much sense to me. I think Sean Strickland should be fighting on US soil, but after this and all the attention it's got, I'm starting to maybe see that Dana White is an absolute genius for doing what he's doing. He announced yesterday during the press conference that they're on schedule for a sellout and a record setting gate for this UFC event. And that means the Canadian people, they love UFC. And more importantly, they love what Sean Strickland is saying and doing. So anyway, this guy who is a journalist, I suppose, uh, by the name of Morgan Campbell, uh, he writes for the CBC, which is, if you don't know, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. Uh, I'm gonna read his article word for word, but before I get into it, I just need to let you know what the CBC is in case you guys um, are not aware of how media works in Canada. So we go over here and we look at the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. The Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, branded as CBC Radio Canada, it's the same thing, is the Canadian public broadcaster for both radio and television. They also do uh, newspaper articles and websites and online media like what this guy does. It is a crown corporation that serves as the national public broadcaster. I'll read that again. It is a crown corporation that serves as the national public broadcaster. In case you're wondering what Crown Corporation means, Crown Corporation in Canada are government organizations with a mixture of commercial and public policy objectives. They are directly and wholly owned by the Crown. The Crown is the monarchy of Canada. So before we even get into this guy's article, it's important to know he is literally working for the Canadian government. This is not a freelance journalist. This is not a journalist working for a privately owned company. This is a journalist who works for the Canadian government and speaks for the Canadian government. So if you head over to the CBC article, um, you'll see Morgan Campbell here. It says senior contributor. I'm going to read this word for word. I'm not going to ad lib anything. And you can make up your own opinion on if this guy has an agenda, if he's correct in his assessment, or what you think about this article. Headline is, don't expect UFC fighter Sean Strickland to face discipline for homophobic tirade in Toronto. It then goes on to say, top MMA promotion seems to have exited the business of policing fighters' speech. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Wednesday afternoon, UFC middleweight champion Sean Strickland responded to a series of questions from a journalist named Alexander K. Lee with a string of insults. Among the low lights, you're an infection, you're the definition of weakness, everything that is wrong with the world is because of effing you. Strickland, who defends his title Saturday night in the main event of UFC 297 at Scotiabank Arena in Toronto, said some things we can't print here and other stuff we'll address later. Vile, bitter, bigoted stuff that, if it had come from an MLB or NFL player, would have generated headlines and led to some combination of fine and suspension. That's exactly why the UFC is what it is. That's why I started this channel about the UFC and not about the NBA or the NFL or any other sport that I follow because the UFC doesn't police speech. That's the whole point. But if you're waiting for the UFC to discipline Strickland for the outburst, don't. Sometime between 2013 when the company suspended Nate Diaz for a homophobic Twitter post and last September when a pair of athletes punctuated post-fight interviews with anti-gay slurs without sanction from the company, the UFC seems to have exited the business of policing fighters' speech. When it comes to monetizing their time in the spotlight through apparel deals and kit sponsorships, athletes have next to no leeway. The UFC has a strict 
set of rules regarding what athletes can wear and fighters fall in line, even if it costs them money. But when fighters get near a microphone, they can say what they want and apologize for it later. Or not. I expect minimal official blowback for Strickland here. He's the A-side of the main event of the UFC's first event in Toronto since 2018. He's no GSP in terms of mainstream appeal, but he's the face of Saturday night's card. And in his exchange with Lee, he's also the clear loser. I would love to know how he is the clear loser. If you go to this guy Morgan Campbell's uh, Twitter page, his name is Morgan Absolute Heater of a Memoir, Campbell, and he has a post here that says, Alexander K. Lee wins by decision. In what way did he win? Sean Strickland absolutely obliterated this guy for asking stupid questions and bringing up old tweets when you're at a UFC press conference. And he basically told him, mate, you are the issue. You're, you're the reason like all this stuff keeps getting brought up. You're the reason there's so much division. At no point did Sean Strickland say anything homophobic. He was talking about Trudeau and shutting down people's bank accounts and all of the other stuff that went on during COVID. I would love to know how Sean Strickland took an L here. So it's pretty clear to see that the Canadian mainstream media and the government is really not happy with the response that Sean Strickland has been getting in Canada, which has been really positive. The Canadian people, and I can tell you this from experience, I lived there on and off for about four years. They're salt of the earth people. They're not these liberal woke people that they're made out to be. That's just a faction of the country. And unfortunately, their prime minister, is not a good person. If you look into him and his family and what his father did, he's not a good person, but that doesn't represent the whole country. These are actually some really good people. And when someone like Sean Strickland comes to their country and starts speaking up for them and speaking the truth and they agree, these media outlets hate it. They get terrified and they want him to be punished somehow. Like what do they want? Do they want the fight to be called off? So they want Sean to make an apology for insulting somebody? Like what exactly do they want Dana to do? But so that's not all. I actually uh, jumped over to Jake Shields' Twitter page, which never fails to entertain. So he shared a tweet by this woman who I guess is an award-winning journalist. I think she's a freelance journalist. It looks like she used to work for a few different media outlets before she got let go. Her name is Rachel Gilmore. And if you look straight at her bio, it says here, nuisance to men with columns. Okay, and a lightning rod to men with podcasts. So, I mean, it seems like she doesn't like men, but why is she assuming that they're men? She then posts this tweet, and I'll play the video, but in the headline it says, Looks like this MMA fighter is a big insecure baby who likes to punch down. Sean Strickland went on an unhinged anti-LGBTQ rant after a reporter had the audacity to ask him about things he'd said so this is the video i'm going to play it in full and hopefully i don't know she doesn't copyright strike me if she sees it we'll see what happens there a professional athlete just said some of the most disgusting anti-gay anti-trans bullshit i have ever heard and so far he has faced zero consequences like his big money-making event is still set to take place oh so i guess we should just cancel the event huh because you're offended eight million dollar gate projected pay-per-view buys of who knows what yeah let's cancel it so uh TikTok, it might be time to do your thing let me tell you why What's, what's TikTok going to do? What are you talking about? TikTok's going to shut it down? This human thumb, Sean Strickland. Yeah, the guy in the women belong in the kitchen t-shirt. So original. He is an MMA fighter. And yesterday, MMA journalist Alexander Lee asked him about disgusting comments he had made in the past about the LGBTQ community. Specifically that time that Strickland said if he had a gay son, it would mean he failed as a man. This seems like a guy who's super secure in his masculinity. Not the entire thing he said. A section that was cut out. That's not the entire thing that he said that day. Anyways, before Lee could even finish his question, Strickland launched into a gnarly tirade. Here's a taste. Are you a gay man? I'm an ally of the community. Okay. If you had a son and he was like, you know, you had a son, he was, you'd be like, oh man, you don't, you don't want a grandkid? No problem. Oh man, well, dude, you're a weak man, dude. You're like, you're part of the problem. Oh, but he didn't stop there. He also went on to attack the community. 10 years ago to be trans was a what? A mental fucking illness. And now all of a sudden people like you can weaseled your way in the world. You are you are an infection. You are the definition of weakness. Let's just get it straight. Okay, he's not calling people an infection. Chicho's not to include this part. He says he has no problem with 
people. He's talking about the media people, the outlets, who are pushing this agenda. He's talking about the people who are pushing it in schools and teaching this stuff to kids. He's not talking about the LGBT community people. He's talking about people like this reporter. You're right, fucking chicks have dicks. The world's not saying that, world's saying no, there are two genders. His comments were then praised on far right messaging boards where they said things like, absolutely savage. And I love this man. By the way, these days, anything that isn't far left is far right. Because there's nothing ballsier than attacking vulnerable marginalized communities. Now that is brave. Beyond a handful of articles and some mixed commentary online, this dude has emerged from this totally unscathed. And my question about that is, what message are we sending to the trans community? What message does it send to the gay community? What message does it send to the far-right trans folks who are cheering this on? And watching Scotiabank Arena welcome this human pimple with open arms. Is Toronto actually okay with this? My money's on no. Your money's on no. Um, it seems like Toronto has spoken up and their money's on yes because it's a complete sellout. It's actually doubled the previous record for the amount of money that arena has ever brought in for a live event. So yeah, your money is wrong. So if you agree, I'd recommend you get loud about it because call me crazy, I'm not cool with standing by while this chicken shit little bitch punches down. Okay, calling UFC fighters Pretty much anything I could understand, but chicken shit, bitch. Uh, yeah, I don't think so. This is one of the toughest dudes on the planet. So that's it. You pretty much get the gist. I think the Canadian people, the, the real actual Canadian people on the ground are loving Sean Strickland and what he's saying. And I think that the mainstream media and the Canadian government aren't happy with the reaction that he's been getting, which has been mostly positive. I've got to say, I've got to hand it to Dana White. He's done it again. He's pulled it off. This is probably going to get way more pay-per-view buyers now because of the reaction. This is why people like these mainstream media people like Morgan Campbell and this woman, Rachel Gilmore, like what they don't understand is they're actually helping. Like he's going to make more money now and the UFC is going to make more money. They're not going to be any negative consequences to this because you're going on TikTok or Twitter and going on a crazed rant. All right, cheers, guys. Thanks for tuning in to another video. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.